Welcome back everyone. Today we have a very special video. Today we are going to be interviewing Xanthi Huen. She's a voice actress. She's voiced characters in many different TV shows, animes, video games, including Persona 5. And she was the voice actress for Nira in the Dragon Quest movie, Dragon Quest Your Story. I have gotten the opportunity to interview her and I hope you guys enjoy this interview. So thank you for joining me today, Xanthi. Yeah, thanks for having me. So, um, let, let's just get started. And I just want to ask you some questions about your career and how everything started. How did you get into voice acting in the first place? How did this all happen? So, um, before uh, I was in voice acting, I had um, studied a bit in theater. Um, I was in it for, I was doing it for, um, in, in middle school and high school. And I also got my degree in it in college. And uh, while I was still in college, I was just watching anime and somehow it just kind of clicked in my mind that, you know, this could be, it would be cool to, you know, to act in like something like anime because, you know, like, um, I don't know, I, I never really thought of it as a career that I could actually do, but I was talking to some of my castmates in rehearsal about it and one of them mentioned that there is um there was a, a competition at anime expo um for voice acting and so i looked it up and i entered and i made it as a finalist and from there i um, the studio um, bang zoom invited me to come and audition and i've been working since so i've just been really lucky it's not a path that a lot of people you know, are able to follow. Yeah, so you started off as a fan and then you ended up just uh, getting into it for, uh, then. So you were an anime fan first. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, usually um, most people I've uh, talked to, voice actors, uh, it's usually just a job to them. It's not really a hobby first. It's more of a just, just work, not really interested in the uh, th things that they, they partake in. So, mm. so you're a big anime I, fan? I guess it depends on the type of genre that you go into. Right, right. Uh, from what I've seen at video game voice actors, a lot of them just, it's just a job to them. So you're an anime and a game fan? I watch a lot more anime than I play games, but I do like to, um, I'll sometimes like watch like, uh, playthroughs and things like that. I see. Uh, what are your favorite animes? Um, <laughs> uh, uh, off the top of my head, um, I really like... Konosuba and One Punch Man, and uh, I, I religiously rewatch uh, Monthly Girls Nozaki Kun and Initial D. Um, yeah, uh, I guess mostly just like the comedic, comedic actiony type stuff. Yeah, those are good. I've I've seen those too. Uh, Konosuba is one of my favorites. I uh, I watched. It's so good. I've been waiting for the third season. Did you watch the movie that came out last year? There's a movie in theaters. Um, that came yeah, out. I did go to see it in theaters. <laughs> it yeah, was pretty it great. It was fun. Uh, were a lot of people like laughing in the, in the audience while you were sitting there? Yeah, it, it was. It's so it's so interesting, like um, to watch something like that in theaters because then you kind of get this communal experience. Like um, you know, you get the inside jokes and you, you know, you kind of like um. You know, just kind of get, getting to see everybody else's reactions compared to your own instead of just watching alone at home. Exactly. So, yeah, it's, yeah, it's a lot of fun going to theaters to watch anime movies. I wish they would do more of those, but it's, uh, you know, with everything going on, it's a little bit harder to have something like that done. Yeah. But even then, like, when anime movies came out, they'd, they'd be, like, you know, certain days only. And if you didn't get to see them, then you missed out. Yeah, it's like uh, limited releases, just one weekend, things like that. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. So, um, what were your first roles like in the industry uh, with voice acting? Um, what, like, how did you start? Um, you did say that you started off with the Anime Expo co uh, competition. What, what was that role? Mm -hmm. What was that role for that you got? So, um, I I didn't get any particular role just for from like that um, competition per se because uh, I think at the time the the winner got the chance to go and like get the studio tour and like a chance to audition and I didn't win but they still um liked me enough to bring me in anyway and um 
the first thing that the f- first show that I worked on was uh, The Familiar of Zero. It was like 2007, 2008 era. And uh, yeah, it was, it, she's a really sweet character, uh, very fun. Um, uh, has a lot of like magical elements to it. And yeah. I was super nervous <laughs> going into my first session for sure because I had zero experience in voiceover and I um, was very lucky to have gotten the chance to kind of like learn in the job. But um, I did have my acting experience uh, before that. So I think that really helps me to transition into doing voiceover. I see. And your acting, your previous acting experience was uh, play, it was mostly plays and things like that, right? Okay, so you were in like the high school play, or yeah. Uh, any uh, memorable roles that you had when you were doing that? Oh my goodness! Um, now I had to like <laughs> think back way, way, way back. Um, so one of the most memorable shows that I had ever ever worked on was actually in college, and we did a play called uh, "Dogs Hamlet Cahoots Macbeth." And they're, um, they have like, um, kind of condensed versions of Hamlet and Macbeth in them, but they're with, it's like a play within a play and the characters themselves that are putting on these plays speak this other nonsensical language. And the language is made of English words, but the the words have different meanings. So it was kind of like, uh. Uh, it kind of like racks your brain a bit because um, you're having to memorize these lines that are like all sorts of like jumbled words. And um, it, it was kind of crazy because after a couple of weeks, um, my castmates and I, we were like, you know what? I, I think I understand what you're saying now. Oh, no, I have been in this play for too long <laughs> because now I, you know, um, but it was a lot of fun. And like, um kind of uh zany uh doing like the 15 minute hamlet and then like doing a one minute hamlet uh <laughs> trying to rush through it's it was, it was a lot of fun i loved it yeah i can imagine that sounds really crazy like a lot of uh wild stuff going on there <laughs> um so uh how did you train to become a voice actor you said you didn't have a lot of experience but obviously you've gotten a lot better over time uh, what do you typically do to train uh your voice Um, so I still actively take a lot of classes, um, depending on like what it is that I want to sharpen. So if I feel like I, um, need some input on like trying out different characters and I'll sign up for like an animation or a video game class, um, to get some, uh, feedback and like some tips on how to improve or just to see what, um, different casting directors kind of prefer um and also taking classes in commercial voiceover because that's a completely different style um so yeah I I just actively take classes and keep training and practice a lot and and nowadays I can just call my auditions my practice because I constantly do those so you do a lot of auditions yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, you said uh, you do voice uh, voiceovers as well. Do you have you done any commercials or anything like that? Or, mm, not not too many. Um, because I've only signed with my agent last year. Um, so I've gotten to audition for a lot, and I've only booked um some like smaller minor stuff, but not not too much yet. It is like a field I'd like to break into a bit more. Yeah, what kind of uh, commercials you th- could you uh, picture yourself voiceovering? What do you think? <laughs> Commercial wise, um, I guess I'm the type that's um, probably like more like home type stuff, um, either like motherly type stuff or like food type commercials or like back to school type things, just because my voice kind of leans a little bit younger sounding. Um, but yeah, <laughs> uh, that that would be fun, I guess. Um, so, uh, which role do you think yeah, is your favorite that you've done, like, like ever? Uh, <laughs> hmm. 
That's always a hard question. I feel like every time it's asked, I always give a different answer. There's a lot to choose uh, from, right? yeah. Yeah, because like, I like them all for different reasons. Um, let me think. Um, wow, my brain is like, what? It's, what? it's okay, it's okay. <laughs> um, so one of the first roles coming to mind right now is um, Menma from Anohana, just because that was, um, I got to play a really, really cute, and, um, kind of rambunctious kind of character, um, full of heart and... Um, yeah, it had a lot of really great uh, emotional moments, too, that um, the director, uh, Patrick Seitz, was really get, great at, like, helping me and the other actors kind of work through. Because um, uh, there is a lot of, like, emotional crying in these in, the, in that show. And, um, you know, sometimes, like, even if, like, a scene is, like, like three to five minutes long, Maybe it's taking us like anywhere from like 10 to 15 minutes to, to go through because we have to like start and stop so much. And the engineer has to like tries, um, try to match it to the picture and make sure that's all fitting and the levels and everything else sounds great. Or like the, the director needs to, you know, um, adjust something and the actor has to do it again. And so like, you know, like you're, you're working up to this emotional state and then you kind of have to like stay in that moment while everything else is like being taken care of and then continue on with the next line and then get interrupted again and then do the next line um so i don't know it seems like that they're kind of um they can be a bit tiring but i kind of love them and i kind of thrive in them <laughs> yeah it sounds it sounds uh, like an emotional roller coaster having to cry and then stop all of a sudden is it like that or yeah it can be because you're like um, depending on if you do like how the lines are spaced out, like if like you, you say something and then the character like, um, responds with something, then you have to like skip and then go into your next line. Uh, it can be kind of difficult because you have to like stop and stay in this emotion while the engineer is doing all the other stuff and then continue when we start on the next line again. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, that was shows Anahana. I have a friend who talks about it mm -hmm. a lot. Yeah. I should probably check it's, it out. Yeah, it's a lovely show. It's on Netflix now, I think. Oh, it is? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so I was looking... Um, you have a YouTube channel, don't you? I do. I don't post as much in there. Right. But, um, yeah. Uh, is it, you said on your YouTube channel, though, that you do uh, sound design as well as voice acting. Um, uh, what about that? Uh, is there anything else about um, that? So that's... Um, that is a very <laughs> recent video, actually. Um... I, I used to sound design for some small productions um, in college. Um, and a friend of mine from college recently reached out and asked me to do the sound design for um, a musical that he was planning to do. But be because of COVID, we haven't been able to um, go forward with that yet. And so we did like a little um, online concert in a, as a way to get the word out and to kind of fundraise a bit so that uh, we have something to hit the ground running with when things are okay to, um, you know, to get rolling again next year when it's safe to go into theaters again. And, um, so I would say for me, it's more of like a hobby and something that I'd like to play with and learn to get better at. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I, I do enjoy sound design and I think it's really fascinating what, um, a lot of engineers like, you know, do to create sounds, um, you know, in a, in a very like illusionary kind of way. Right. It is pretty cool. Like it, like in movies and how they use, you know, random objects around the house to create different kinds of sounds and stuff like that. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Um, so I was wondering, uh, compared to video, uh, video games and anime, how is it different voicing a video game compared to an anime series? Um, so for anime, there's a lot more technicalities, mainly because you have to um, match the lip flaps. So like a lot of um, generally, um, the scripts are written to match the time. But then sometimes when you, um, you know, you're you're performing the line and then the 
the director will look at it and be like, well, actually, um, can you um, slow down the first three words of the sentence? And then I need you to speed up the rest of the sentence. So you have to and then you, you perform again. And then you have to like keep that in mind so that you're matching whenever the character opens and closes their mouth. And sometimes um, because of how it was animated in Japanese for the Japanese, you know, we have to kind of alter and add little weird um, uh, pauses in between to make sure it matches and for it to still flow in English without sounding really clunky. Um, so there's that. Um, I I would say that's like the main um, difference between the two. Um, for for dubbing like like a JRPG, um, a lot of times you're not um, you don't have the restraints that that anime does because you're not matching to picture unless it's like a cutscene. Then it's um, almost the exact same process. Um, and I feel like video games, they tend to go quicker because they're not having to match the picture. Um, dubbing does uh, is sometimes a really long process and the director will have to like uh, rewrite lines just to make sure that it fits better uh, depending on what they see and how it, uh, an actor performs. Some, you know, some actors talk really fast, some talk a little bit slower. Or, um, yeah, I, I, I'd say that's about it. I see. I, I didn't realize that that was part of the process, like matching the mouth with the the, the lips to make it like the, to paste it like that. I thought I thought that they did it in like post processing to to fix it like that, but you actually have to paste yourself oh. with the original Japanese version. I wasn't aware of that. Yeah. Well, the engineer will sometimes kind of like manipulate a little bit to make sure that it matches perfectly. But then if they're um, doing it too much, then you can kind of sound. Uh, you can hear the 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 audio like processing in it and it sounds a little like strange so then you have to do it again um just so it sounds natural um uh, yeah okay um so i wanted to talk uh, more about some of your roles in uh in a little bit more detail uh the first one it, this, earlier this year you played nira in the netflix movie dragon quest your story yeah uh, yeah animated movie that um uh, so could you tell me more about that how did you, how did you get that role um, so I, I got the audition for Nira and Bianca. And um, when I was auditioning for Nira, I saw in the instructions that they had said, oh, if um, for anybody that's auditioning for Nira, we'd also like to hear you audition for the old lady. Um, but, you know, at the moment, we, we haven't decided if we want to cast one actress to do both or if it's going to be two people yet. But just try for both. And so um, I didn't get the audition for the old lady, so I had to ask my agent. I was like, oh, they say it's required. Do you guys have it? And they were like, oh, yeah, here here it is. And so I auditioned for her as well, um, even though I wasn't sure if I would get it. And I was like, I wasn't really concerned because I was like, oh, they'll probably just cast me as one and maybe not the other. Um, and I was really surprised that they had me do both. Um yeah, because like I up until then I had not played a character above the age of thirty, <laughs> really? and she is like ancient. She is like an un, unknown age, um, but um, it was a lot of fun. I that at least that was like the the audition process itself. Um, when I went in to record, um, everybody was like, "Oh, we were really impressed with uh, your your old lady. We couldn't. We you know we." had never heard you do that voice before and I was like yeah I, I never get to audition for them so I yeah <laughs> I'm a little surprised too <laughs> but um you know like since they were so excited I got a little bit uh panicked I was like oh no I hope I hope I can live up to their expectations now <laughs> well, it, was, but, it yeah. was a very convincing old lady that's uh, I didn't see it coming that she was actually uh, a young a younger person at, at first Ah, oh, thank you. I'm so glad. I, I I was hoping that the illusion wouldn't be broken. <laughs> yeah, because because uh, in the story, the old lady was actually Nira pretending to be the old lady, right? Yeah. Right. Um. So, uh, when when did you record this? Like, uh, what, uh, how long did it take, and what was like the time frame? Do you remember that at all? Or, um, let's see. So it was like it was. Oh my gosh! Anything that's early this year feels like ten years ago because of quarantine. But um, it was early this year. 
um, I I would say almost like maybe four or five days after I auditioned. Like they had a really short time to um, get this um, out. I don't know why like they had such a short production time. Um, but yeah, I, I literally got a text in the morning um, and say, asking if I could come in. <laughs> like, well, when I, it was like a text at 8 a.m. And I didn't like see it until like nine. And they were asking if I could come in at 10. And I was like, that is impossible. I, I can't make it by then. But I am free after like, in like, you know, like this time. And she was like, okay, we need you to come in like um, in the afternoon then just so we can get the trailer because it, it like, the trailer comes out in like two days. And I was like, what? <laughs> so... <laughs> So I came in, I did like the trailer and we um, started recording for the, the movie itself as well. Um, so it, w- it went pretty quick. I would say I finished in like a few sessions. And it was very last minute. So like you finished like a month before the movie came out, right? Something like that. Yeah, we were working on it like a month before it came out. Because like, I think when I was recording the trailer, I was like, Wait, they're saying it comes out on this date? What? Um. So, what was? How was the recording session like? Like, how, is is it much different than recording an anime? Is it a, is it a similar or? Um, I think it's exa- I would say it's exactly the same. Um, I think they were a little bit more lenient when it came to the um, matching the flaps, just because they were super duper short on time. Um. So we tried to match timing as best as we could. Um, but yeah. But yeah, I, I, I really liked working on it. Um, the director, Mike Schneider, is like really fun and energetic and positive. He's a really great guy to work with. Yeah. Uh, was there anyone else on the cast who you worked with previously uh, who you recognized? or? Um, well, I, was, uh, I thought it was really cool that... Um, you were alone, Thal was in it. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, while I was working on it, I had no idea who was in it or anything like that until it came out. Oh, so it was like separate. It was, you were like in separate rooms recording the lines? Yeah. Most uh, dub projects are are recorded solo. You never record with anyone else. Right. Uh, so you, you, you just didn't know who, who was in it until the movie came out. I see. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, did you watch the movie when it came out? Yeah. Uh, what'd you think? Uh, did, did you like it? I, I did like it. I, I'd have to admit that um, I hadn't like played any of the games, so I wasn't really familiar with the franchise. So I watched it from the point of some view of someone that didn't know anything about Dragon Quest. Mm-hmm. And um, I found it to be very... Uh, I feel like the pacing was kind of quick, like kind of episodic. Um, like maybe it makes more sense for, uh, fans because it's like, oh yeah, that's when that happened in the game and that's when that happened. But, um, from my perspective, I was like, oh, like everything, like time goes so quick. Um, I know that that's a common uh, complaint about the movie that a lot of people have had, mm-hmm. but it's still like, it was still very beautiful and I wish, I wish Nera had a bigger part in it. Yeah, in the uh, in the video game that it's based on, you could actually choose to marry Nira or Bianca, so you could spend like mm-hmm. the rest of the game with uh, either one of them. But I guess they uh, they chose Bianca to be the uh, the main girl in this. And you you auditioned for Bianca, you said, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, really? Uh, and uh, so you were interested in that role. So they ma- they made you audition for both of them, or how, how did that happen? Uh, yeah. So I I got the chance to audition for both of them. They were just both sent to me by my agent. Okay, and uh, you got Nira. Mm-hmm. Well, that's cool. So, um, let's see. I'm gonna look at this. Yeah. So, uh, anything else interesting happened with the uh, the Dragon Quest your story recording sessions at all? Uh, anything people don't know about? Mm, no, I guess that's about it. I'm I'm not sure if most people realize that I voiced the old lady, but. Uh, it's just that. <laughs> I think people might not might not know that, but it's a, it's a it's a very convincing old lady. I, I'll tell you that. Yeah, and I I don't mention it just because I I want it to be a surprise because you know I don't want to ruin that part of the story because um, it's revealed later. But uh, but yeah. 
it was very fun. She's very like over the top. And I r- imagine Nira having like a lot of fun being kind of bossy towards Luca <laughs> and making him drink that like, crazy potion. The potion that made him like fall asleep and have like a weird <laughs> dream. and Hallucination. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Anyway, yeah, that, that that's a great uh, a great role you did um as Nira. We all liked it a lot. The fans. Well, thank you. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'd like to talk about another role you did. Um, my viewers might not realize this, but I'm actually a big fan of the Persona franchise. And oh yay! Yeah, you played Haru Okamura in in that game, and mm-hmm. that's uh that's one of your bigger roles. Would you agree? Or yeah, I would say that's um one of my most known roles. Mm-hmm. So um, I just want to know the story. How did you get that role? I, so this is one of the rare occasions where I was just cast and I didn't audition for, for this, uh, for Persona so or the, for Haru or for anything. <laughs> they just found you and said, oh, hey, you're Haru. That's, that's what happened. Yeah. I mean, they, I just got an email saying like, hey, we have a project we'd like you to work on. Uh, can you come in? And like, I, so it was super vague. I didn't know anything until I signed all my NDAs and they were like, okay, so we're working on Persona 5 and this is the character you're going to be playing. And then they described her to me. They showed me a picture of her and yeah. And then you basically just like jump into it. They just kind of tell me like, you know, scene by scene, what's happening, who I'm talking to and my relationship with that character, just so I can deliver lines like in a way that, um, makes sense i guess <laughs> but yeah i see and uh that's an rpg a really long game so how, how long was mm-hmm. the recording session for that like how long did that take it was really long i would i don't i i would say it was like about a, a, a spread out over a year um i i mean i that's at least that's how it felt for me and you know my character comes in like pretty late in the game so i can't imagine what it was like uh for some of the earlier characters, all their recording sessions, but it was spaced out um, over many, many months. I see. So yeah, I, I can imagine. It's, so it's it's a lot longer than most anime projects, you'd say, or. Mhm. Oh, I see. Uh, and there was a there was a Persona anime series. You voiced Haru in that as well, or. Yeah, yeah, we did. Um, it was really cool because like we we did really want to do the anime and um it just kind of took a while for them to um get around to doing it and i'm glad we got to do it though i see yeah i, I haven't watched that yet but i do know there's an english dub for that um so i would hope that mm-hmm. they would cast the uh, the game the game cast as the characters as well in the anime version mm-hmm. um did you play the game after it came out or yeah i did i'm uh i played through persona 5 and i'm like at Futaba's uh, palace right now in Royal. Mm-hmm. All right. So, um, so how's it like to, uh, when you're playing the game and you like talk to a character and it's just your voice talking to yourself? Like, how, <laughs> how's that feel? Um, well, um, you know, at first, um, it's kind of weird because like I recognize not only it, you know, it's my voice and it's just like ah, it's my voice. Um, and you know, I recognize all the other characters' voices um, as their actors. And so, like, it it takes, um, you know, a couple hours for me to, like, get over that connection and just, like, hear that voice as that character's voice. And so just to have that kind of disconnect. Um, same when it comes to playing um, and hearing my own voice come out of <laughs> Haru's face. But, yeah. So um, who did you date in Persona? Because you can date people in Persona. Uh, who, who did you choose? <laughs> Of course, I chose Haru. <laughs> you, you chose yourself? <laughs> Mainly because I wanted to hear how the lines that I recorded for her turned out. So I was pretty aggressive um, with trying to uh, get her maxed out. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, so um, has this role like changed your career a lot? Like, uh, has, it, has it made a big difference at all, you think? I, I would say so. Um... Well, it's, I guess it's kind of hard because, like, I feel like my career in general has been just very steady when it comes to, like, um, like a steady rise. Um, but I would definitely say um, being a part of, like, a massive franchise such as Persona 5 
has, um, I don't know, maybe given me a little bit more, um, uh, how do you say, uh, a kind of a most prestigious light, I suppose. <laughs> that and also, like, Persona 5 has, um, you know, we've, like, crossed over into a bunch of, like, different other little games like we were in like smash brothers and we we're in Catherine and um oh yeah you voice a character yeah. in smash brothers technically right that's that's true um, technically yeah we're in there <laughs> did, did you sit down and like record new lines for that or what, what happened yeah to that? i did i think we all did um even though it's prominently just uh joker but um yeah i was really excited we went in and uh we did the the trail announcement trailer for um, the Game Awards, uh, I think, and um, we did that literally two weeks before. And I, I asked him, I was like, "Oh, when do you guys think this will like come out?" Just so that I can kind of have a gauge for it. And they were like, "Oh, probably next spring." And I was like, oh, "Okay, so a couple months from now," which is pretty common for games. And they showed the trailer two weeks later. I was like, what? So it was kind of a surprise for all of us. Oh, so you thought... Uh, very that pleasant one. You thought it was going to it was gonna release next year, like the, the trailer? Yeah. Okay. We didn't, we didn't know. All right, so you were probably really surprised. Did you, did you, were you watching the Game Awards and all of a sudden it, it just showed up and you were like, oh, that's me? Yeah, I was like, oh, it was, it was just very exciting mm-hmm. just to see like the, the animation and the infiltrate infiltration and all that <laughs> right um uh, have you voiced any other video games as well because um i was look, trying to look at your wikipedia page and see what else and i've noticed a few other roles um you voiced uh the legend of heroes series and the uh, mm-hmm. F- fire emblem you voiced the character in fire emblem three houses as well um mm-hmm. could you tell me a little bit about that one um so in fire emblem three houses i voiced a character called marianne and she's one of the students that you can uh, recruit to your house, um, depending on which house that you you joined. So if you're already part of the Golden Deer, then she's already in your house. Um, but she is um, uh, very unconfident. She has a lot of uh, familial issues, and uh, she te- generally tends to avoid conversation whenever possible. Uh, very religious. She loves animals, and she um, has a really great, great arc. Uh, I think she's uh, very relatable. At least I found her to be very relatable to myself. Um, yeah, she's very strong. <laughs> a great uh, magic caster. Because uh, I, I joined the other one. Um, the uh, I forget what the guy's name. The the blonde guy, the the prince. Oh, uh, blue lion. Yeah, I joined his when I was playing it. I, I haven't done the uh, other playthroughs yet, so I haven't met your character or talked to your character much yet. So mm-hmm. I I didn't know she, you you did voice a character. Um, is she in that that mobile spinoff also? Did you voice her in that one or? Um, she's uh, she's not in Fire Emblem Heroes. I do voice a, a character in Fire Emblem Heroes uh, called Air. Um, she had a really big um, story arc last year. Um, but yeah, she is the uh, um, princess of the the realm of the dead. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. So, um, did you voice any uh, any anything else uh, recently? Anything major or? Um. So I think you mentioned. Um, Legend of Heroes, The Trails of Cold Steel 4. That just uh, came out, was that last week? Last week or two weeks ago? Very recently. Um, yeah, so I, I voice Altina. Um, and uh, yeah, I've been playing her for uh, a couple of games now. And I really love her. She's had a very gradual change over time because she started off very um, very robotic, almost like a... Well, I think she was... Uh, an antagonist in the first um, game that she came out in, in the second game. And, um, yeah, over time, she's kind of slowly warmed up and starting to show more emotions <laughs> in her speech. And, yeah, it's re- it's really sweet, and I like how sassy she is. Right, and you have to kind of change your voice up a little bit as the, the, the games go on and the characters develop, right? 
Yeah, it is kind of hard. Um, I do have to rely a lot on the director and the team um, there to make sure that I'm um, fine, staying within a good balance because she does kind of talk kind of monotone and kind of emotionless. But, um, you know, gradually over time, she does have like hints of more warmth and just, um, uh, you know, just showing other emotions um, other than just being kind of blasé, uh, like a little, I, I like to call her like a little soldier, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, also, this is not on your Wikipedia page, but I, I saw it on your Twitter feed. You said that you voiced the character in 13 Sentinels, Aegis Rim, which just came out recently. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I actually played that. That's a really good game. You, you voiced uh, Miwako uh, Sawatari in that game. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, uh, I know that... Um, Story-wise, she, um, well, I remember the one of the very first uh, recording sessions, uh, the director was kind of explaining to me the general story because I was like, oh, can you tell me about it before we get started? And he was like, so, yeah, it's, there's a lot of, like, timey-wimey stuff and, like, you know, you're, all these characters are fighting, like, these kaijus and trying to save the world, but none of that has anything to do with you. <laughs> so exactly. I was like, oh, <laughs> Which is amazing. So she's just kind of, kind of there to talk about food and boys and have a good time. <laughs> yeah, she's like very much a side character. I thought when I when I th- when I heard that you were going to be in the game, I thought, oh wow, can't wait to see what uh what Xanthi's character is going to be. And I was playing <laughs> playing Thirteen Sentinels, and it's like she's she's really like unimportant, very si- much a side character. Yeah. <laughs> and the story is like, do you do, uh, do you like still understand the story at all, or can not really like for 13 sentinels so i only um i only really know everything from miwako's point of view i haven't i have it but i haven't played the game yet so i only have a general understanding of what the game is about but yeah <laughs> yeah it's pretty hard to grasp it's it's uh it's all over the place that game but it's fun it's, it's, it's a good game though i you should definitely mm-hmm. play play when when you get a chance um so these roles like legend heroes and 13 sentinels it, these came out during the pandemic. Did you have to go to a voice uh, a recording studio during the pandemic to to voice these characters, or was it earlier? So for Trails, um, we recorded that um, before the pandemic. So um, that was in studio. And um, for 13 Sentinels, that was actually the very first project I worked on during the pandemic. So there was a lot of, like, a whole lot of nothing for the first few weeks um, while all the studios were trying to figure out how to get set up and record remotely. And um, yeah, it was, it was kind of, uh, I was really nervous leading up to it. I was like, I hope that my setup is good enough um, and everything. But uh, luckily, you know, I had, I had to send them sent, um, sample recording samples and I had to send them like a list of, all my gear and make sure that you know that everything would be compatible and like up to speed to be able to connect and record with them um but yeah luckily luckily it worked out and i've been recording a lot from home i see and uh you have like really high quality gear and like a little sound studio in your house or is it like i'm just wondering how how it how you do it (laughs) well i'm sure a lot of voice actors do but for me um so i record out of uh my walk-in closet and um actually uh it's it's i am kind of a hoarder when it comes to clothes so i have a lot of insulation already because it's just jam-packed full of clothes and um but it's like the perfect like quiet space um in my apartment and um um and like a lot of the equipment I already had because I was already just doing auditions from home and I um was already recording like indie projects from home so I kind of had like a basic setup and um after getting you know feedback from some of my engineer friends like they said that my sound was pretty good and so I just kept with what I have. Um, and luckily, like, a lot of studios have approved of it. I haven't had any complaints yet. Um, 
from anybody like saying like, oh, you know, that, you know, they would like to hire me, but my quality wasn't good enough. I haven't had that remark yet. <laughs> we'll see. But, um, but yeah, I, I think um, there are some, some studios that um, give the option to coming into studio if I'm not, un if I was unable to record from home. So that's kind of nice for people that may not have like a setup that's um, considered broadcast quality. Right. Yeah. That's interesting. I never thought about going to a closet full of clothes to record. I, I should try that in the future. <laughs> that's a good idea. Yeah, because like, um, you know, uh, um, a soundproof booth can cost like thousands of dollars and not everybody has the money or the space for that. Um, and, you know, you get kind of get to work with what you got and um luckily for me it's just a closet full of clothes <laughs> um so are there any um roles in the future that we should know about that you want to talk about at all um uh pfft. so um, <laughs> i'm trying to think of what what can i talk about um because i'm recording a couple of um, really cool things that maybe announced soon uh, maybe even like next week soon but i can't say anything yet because it's not out yet um well um early next year uh i have a game called fallen legion revenants coming out um i did a lot of production work on that um and i actually directed it and um it's a really great uh, little indie game and i also uh, return as a small character in it. Um, yeah, so there's that coming out next year. Your most recent project is. Uh, what, what's your most recent project? You say or. Um. So. Uh, besides uh, Trails of Cold Steel Four, I guess right now I have uh, Apare Raman, which is like an anime on Funimation. Uh, it's about like a. Uh, it's kind of like wacky racers. Um, they're racing across the country, and uh, my character is there to support one of the racers. And it's also the first time I get to um, dub with an accent. Um, this one is specifically French. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, that. It's like an ongoing uh, anime right now. So be sure to check that one out. Yep, everyone, check out her French accent. Let's uh, hear how that sounds. <laughs> Uh, well, um, I think that that's a, a, a I think that's a pretty good uh, interview. We had uh, I wanted to thank you for uh, agreeing to talk to me for this time. Uh, I really appreciate yeah, it. Thanks for reaching out. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, uh, thank you and everyone. Uh, check out Xanthi on her social media. You want to plug her social medias? You can go ahead right now. Yeah. Um, you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at it's Xanthor. At it's Anthor, so it's all, it's all the same thing. Mm-hmm. All right, well, thank you, and uh, everyone, we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm. Thank you.